Hello and welcome to 1.2, Properties of Exponents and Radicals. We're in Math 126. Now this section, I'll be honest, this is a review. This is what I teach in my Math 196 classes. This is something that really shouldn't be new to anybody. You may have forgotten some of it and that's understandable. But I'm going to go through this. This is a video. You can pause it. When I'm doing examples, I'll work on the example. And you can pause it if you want to write things down, but I'm going to keep on moving. Okay. Properties of exponents and radicals, natural number exponents. If A is any real number and if N is any natural number, then this should have said A to the N power, which is A times A times A dot 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 times A, where there are N A's being multiplied. The base is the number A in the expression. The exponent is the number N, or the power. Raising a to the nth power is the process of multiplying n factors of a. The nth power of a is a way of expressing, again, a to the n power. So make those corrections on your notes. So what is 3 to the 4th? That is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, or 81. How about negative 4 squared? That's negative 4 times negative 4. It's the entire quantity because it's in parentheses which is 16. Versus in this next case, there's no parentheses around the 4 and the negative, so this is the negative of 4 times 4, or negative 16. Next one, the negative of negative 4 to the third power times 6 squared. That's the negative of negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 times 6 times 6. That's going to give us the negative of negative 64 times 36. Negative 64 from that part, 36 there. The double negative there is going to cancel, so it's 2,304. And then x times x, x squared times x cubed, that's x squared. I'll do it this way x times x times x times x times x. You have two x's, three x's, that's x to the fifth power. Okay, and that leads us right into the next concept. So pause if you need to pause it. But the next concept, which is laws of exponents. So we have the product property a to the n times a to the m is a to the m plus n. You'd add the powers if you multiply things at the same base. Zero is an exponent, a to the zero is one, as long as a is not zero because you can't have zero to the zero power. And negative integer exponents, as long as a is not zero, a to the negative n is one over a to the n. So evaluate the following. y to the third over y to the sixth, that'd be y to the three minus six, which is y to the negative three, which is one over y cubed. Twelve x cubed over four x cubed, the x cubes divide out. Twelve divided by four is three. Here we have five to the one times five to the negative five, that's five to the one plus negative five. That's five to the negative four, or one over five to the fourth which is 1 over 625. And 1 over t to the negative fifth, that's just the negative below, it's going to bring it up, t to the fifth power. Moving on to the next page. Again, feel free to pause if you need to pause. More properties of exponents. Quotient property, we saw this one in play with that y to the third over y to the sixth, but a to the m over a to the n is a to the m minus n. If we divide things at the same base, we subtract the powers. Next one, a to the m to the n. I don't know what happened to the answer part. That's going to be a to the m times n, so put that in your notes. A product to a power, a b to the m power is a to the m b to the m. And quotient, a over b to the m is a to the m over b to the m. Negative exponents, you have, if you have a to the negative m over b to the negative n, then b to the negative n is going to go up, a to the negative m is going to go down. Also, a over b to the negative n, it's like flipping it, and then you have positive power b to the n over a to the m. 
So example three. So simplify the following expressions by using the product uh, properties of exponents. Write the final answer with only positive exponents. So I'm going to move it up a little bit so I have space to fit the whole thing. So here we have 17x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 2, all that to the zero power, and that's going to be 1. And we have the restriction as long as 17x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 2 is not equal to zero. Next, x cubed y squared to the negative 1 times e to the negative 3 over x squared z to the negative 2. I bring this negative in here, that's x to the 3 times negative 1 or negative 3. y to the 2 times negative 1, that's y to the negative 2. z to the negative 3 over x squared z to the negative 2. Or z, yeah, that's right. Now, this is x to the negative 3 minus 2, this is power here, y to the negative 2, z to the negative 3 minus 2, minus negative 2, excuse me. So we have y, so start with x, x to the negative 5, y to the negative 2, z to the negative 1. So they're all going to have negative powers. It's going to be 1 over x to the 5th, y to the 2, z. Now, next one, 27x to the negative 2 to the 0 power, that's just going to be 1. So, being this has a negative power, I'll send the whole thing down below. This has negative power, I'll send this up. That's going to be x, y to the 2 power over negative 3x squared, y to the negative 2 to the 2 power. That's x squared, y squared over Negative 3 squared is 9. x squared squared is x to the 4th. y to the negative 2 squared is y to the negative 4. So it's going to be x to the 2 minus 4. y to the 2 minus negative 4 over 9. So x to the negative 2, y to the 6 over 9. So it's going to be y to the 6th over 9x squared. And by the way, I'm going with positive exponents only here. That's why I'm moving things around up and down. Next one, 5xz to the negative 2 squared times 7x cubed y. So it's going to be 5 squared is 25. x squared. z to the negative 2 squared is z to the negative 4 because we multiply the negative 2 times 2 times 7. Well, I guess this is all negative power, so it's going to go down below, 7x cubed y. This goes down there. So we have 25x squared minus, x to the 2 minus 3, z to the, I guess that's it, z is the negative 4, leave it as negative 4, over 7x cubed y, or just 7y. And we'll have 25x to the negative 1, z to the negative 4, over 7y. So it's going to be 25 over 7xz to the 4th power. Okay. Feel free to pause if you need more time. We're going to go on to scientific notation now. That's a long lesson, seven pages. Okay, scientific notation. In numbers and scientific notation, what is written in the form a times 10 to the n, where a, the absolute value of a is between 1 and 10. I should have had strictly less than 10. can't be equal to the 10. And n is an integer. If n is a positive integer, the number is large in magnitude. If n is a negative integer, so the power, then it's a small number. The number itself can be either positive or negative, and the sign of A determines the sign of the number as a whole. So to convert 
912, negative 912 million to scientific notation. So there's no decimal showing, it's behind the last number. Move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's negative 9.12 times 10 to the 8th power. Put in standard form, 3.2 times 10 to the 7th. So I'm going to move it 7 places, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I put zeros in those empty places. So it's three, two, zero, 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 zero. Thirty-two million. And then convert negative point zero 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 one eight seven to scientific notation. Move it once, twice, three times, four times. Negative one point eight seven times ten to the negative four because this number was less than one. Feel free to pause if you need to. I'm going to go on. Evaluate each, each expression. We have 8 times 10 to the negative 3 times 3 times 10 to the negative 2 divided by 2 times 10 to the 5th. So this is like 8 times 3 over 2 times 10 to the negative 3 plus negative 2 minus 5. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12 times 10 to the negative 10. You could write this as 1.2 times 10 because 12 was 1.2 times 10 to the 1 times 10 to the negative 10. 1.2 times 10 to the negative 9. That's in scientific notation. The next one, we'd have 3.2 times 5 times 2 times 10 to the 7 plus negative 4 plus negative 10. So 3.2 times 5 times 2, that's going to be 32 times 10 to the negative 7. That's 3.2 times 10 to the 1 times 10 to the negative 7. That's 3.2 times 10 to the negative 6. I'm going to move on. Feel free to pause that. Moving on to roots. Nth roots and radical notation. Case one, n is an even natural number. If a is a non-negative real number and n is an even natural number, the nth root of a is the non-negative real number b with the property that b to the n power is a. That is, the nth root of a equals b is equivalent to saying a equals b to the n. In this case, note that nth root of a to the n is a and the nth root of a to the n. So in the first case, nth root of a, that result to the n is a, nth root of a to the n is a. Case two, n is an odd natural number. If a is any real number, and n is an odd natural number, nth root of a is the real number b whose sign will be the same sign as a. So if a was negative, b is negative. If a is positive, b is positive. In the previous case, b had to be positive, and a was positive. Okay with the property that b to the n equals a, and the nth root of a is b, and so on. The expression the nth root of a expresses the nth root of a in a radical notation. The natural number n is called the index. a is a radicand, and this is the radical sign. By convention, square root of 2 is usually just written with that symbol without the 2 there. So when there's no index outside that radical, it's just the square root of 2. So simplify the following. The cube root of negative 27, that's just going to be negative 3 because negative 3 to the third power is negative 27. The 6 root of negative 64, this is not real because you cannot take an even indexed root of a negative value. Okay, so it's not real. A is negative and n is even. 
Last case, a fourth root of 81, that is real. That's going to be 3, because 3 to the fourth power equals 81. Okay, moving on here. Feel free to pause. Simplified radical form. The radicand contains no factors with an exponent greater than or equal to the index of the radical. The radicand contains no fractions. The, denom the denominator, if there, if there is one, contains no radical. And the greatest common factor of the index in any exponent occurring in the radicand is 1. That is, the index and the exponent in the radicand have no common factor other than 1. This means you're in simplified form. So some properties of radicals. Nth root of a to the n is a if n is odd, but the nth root of a to the n is the absolute value of a if n is even. Nth root of a b is nth root of a times nth root of b. Nth root of a over b is nth root of a over nth root of b. And the nth root of the nth root of a is the m times nth root of a. Okay, so example seven, simplify the radical. Here we're talking about the cube root of negative 8 times the cube root of x to the 6th times the cube root of y to the 9th. The cube root of x to the negative, or sorry, of negative 8 is going to be negative 2. The cube root of x to the 6th is going to be x squared. 6 divided by 3 is 2. The cube root of y to the 9th is, everyone say it, 9 divided by 3 is 3. Good. Here we have the square root of 2x to the 6th y. That's the square root of x to the 6th times the square root of 2y. Well, the index here is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. That's x cubed times the square root of 2y. We can't do anything with the square root of 2y. And for the next one, the cube root of a cubed b to the 12th over 27c to the 6th. This is saying the cube root of a cubed, the cube root of b to the 12th over the cube root of 27 times the cube root of c to the 6th. So the cube root of a cubed is a. The cube root of b to the 12th, 12 divided by 3 is 4. The cube root of 27 is 3, and the cube root of c to the 6th, 6 divided by 3 is 2. Move on, feel free to pause. Rationalizing the denominator. Case one, your denominator is a single term containing the root. If the denominator is a single term containing the, the uh, a factor of the nth root of a to the m, we will take advantage of the fact that the nth root of a to the m times the nth root, so the same index of a to the n minus n, you subtract those. So you get a number, basically you're trying to find a number big enough to make this number plus this number is n. That's what you're after. That's the nth root of a to the m times a to the m minus n minus m. That gives you nth root of a to the n. So now you can, that become a. Okay, this last expression, that's a t, is either a or absolute value of a, depending on whether n is even or odd. Of course, we can't multiply the denominator by a factor of n times a to the n minus m without multiplying the numerator by the same factor. As we observe, or as we otherwise change the expression, the method in this case is to multiply the fraction by the 1, nth root of a to the n minus m over nth root of a to the n minus m. So it's going to change the denominator so you wouldn't have a, fra a radical anymore, but the numerator is going to have a radical. For example, 1 over the square root of a will be 1 over the square root of a times square root of a over square root of a. The square root of a times square root of a is a. 1 times the square root of a is a. Square root of a. So that's if you have a single term down below. We have a second case when you would have two terms down below. Now for this case, we take advantage of the conjugates. a plus b times a minus b is a, square, is a squared minus b squared. So in the case 
of the denominator being a binomial of one or two square roots, to eliminate the radicals, you must multiply the, denom the denominator by its conjugate. So one over the square root of a plus b, we one over the square root of a plus b, that's just rewritten here, times the square root of a minus b over the square root of a minus b. Now you have an a plus b, a minus b situation. Now I give you the square root of a minus b on top, but down below the square root of a times square root of a is a. The middle stuff would subtract out because of the sum and difference. b times negative b is b squared. So example eight, rationalize the denominator. We have the cube root of 4x squared over 3y to the fourth power. This would be like saying the cube root of 4x squared, and you can't do anything with that, over the cube root of 3y to the fourth power. Now, 4 will not divide into 3 evenly, or 3 does not go into 4 evenly, excuse me. So what we do instead, and this is like a 3 to the 1, y to the fourth, we'll multiply it by the cube root of something. And the idea is to have 3 be to the 3 power. It's the 1 power now. We want to have it, our goal is to have it be the cube root of 3 to the 3 power, y to the 6 power. Because 4 can't be divided evenly by 3, but 6 can be divided by 3. So you have to ask yourself, okay, self, this has a 1 power. This needs to be what power? 1 plus what is 3, and I hope you know that that is 2. We have y to the 4th. y to the something gives us 6. 4 plus what is 6? It's 2. So I'm multiplying top and bottom by the same thing, so I'm eff effectively multiplying by 1 here. That's going to be 4 times 3 squared is 9 squared y squared over our cube root of 3, y to the 6th. This is going to be the cube root of 36 x squared y squared over the cube root of 3 cubed is 3, the cube root of y to the 6th is y to the 2. Okay, that's it for that one. The key here was to get these powers to be something that could be divided by the index, divided evenly. So 3 to the 1, 3 to the 2 makes 3 to the 3, y to the 4th times y to the 2 is y to the 6th. In the next one we have a binomial down below, so it's 3 over square root of 2 minus square root of 5. We'll multiply this by the conjugate square root of 2 plus the square root of 5. This will be 3 times square root of 2 plus square root of 5 over, this has a result of being 2 minus 5. Square root of 2 squared is 2. Square root of 5 squared is 5. This is 3 times square root of 2 plus square root of 5 over negative 3. That divides out. So we have negative of square root of 2 plus square root of 5 or negative square root of 2 minus square root of 5. In the last case, we're still looking at the denominator. We have square root of x minus square root of y. We'll multiply this by the conjugate. Square root of x plus the square root of y. I know that's what we have on top already. It really doesn't matter what we have on top. We're focusing on the bottom. So on top, stuff's not going to go away. In fact, we'll have a middle term. That's going to be x squared plus 2 root xy plus y squared. If you don't believe me, foil it out. Use a rule that's a a plus b times a plus b rule over x squared minus y squared. No, just x minus y. All these squares aren't there either. Because square root of x times square root of x is x. There we go. That's going to be x minus y. And no, we cannot cancel the x and the y. And that's it. Okay, I'm going to go on to the last page here, so pause if you need to pause. Example 9 says combine the radical expressions if possible. 
So we want to simplify as much as we can. And if the radicals have the same index, the same radicand, that is the uh, terms under the radical, then we can combine them. So from here, the square root of 27, well, we can treat that as the square root of 9 times 3 times x times y squared minus 4 times the square root of 3 times x times y squared. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of y squared is y times the square root of 3x minus 4. The square root of y squared is y times the square root of 3x. That's going to be negative y times the square root of 3x. Now, to be technically correct, I probably should have put absolute value signs around the y because it was a variable, the square root of the variable. So if, a, if y has a negative, the negative squared became positive. When we squared there, but either answer. I wouldn't mark off on that one. Next one, we have the absolute value of x times the square root of 8xy squared z cubed minus the absolute value of yz times the square root of 18 x cubed z. It's the absolute value of x times the square root of, that's 2 times 4 times x times y squared times z times z squared minus the absolute value of yz times the square root of 2 times 9 times x times x squared times z. So what we get out of this is the absolute value of, well, square root of 4 is 2. We have our absolute value of x, we have a y, and we have a z. Square root of 2 x z. Then minus, here we have square root of 9 is 3, absolute value Square root of x squared is x, y, z. We have what's left? 2xz. So 2 times the square root of x, y, z. Sorry, 2 times the absolute value of x, y, z times the square root of 2xz. Minus 3 times the absolute value of x, y, z times the square root of 2xz. It's going to be negative absolute value of x, y, z times the square root of 2xz. Move on to the last concept here. Feel free to pause. No. Feel free to pause. I'm moving now. Okay, rational number exponents. Rational meaning ratio or fraction. These are when you have exponents that are fractions. This should say a to the 1 over n. The meaning of a to the 1 over n if n is a natural number, and if the nth root of a is a real number, then a to the 1 over n is the nth root of a. And the meaning of a to the m over n, if m and n are natural numbers with n not equal to 0 and m and n are relatively prime, that means they don't have to be prime numbers themselves, but they have no common factors. And if the nth root of a is a real number, then a to the m over n is the nth root of a to the m, which is the nth root of a to the m power. So either the nth root of a to the m or the nth root of a to the m can be used to evaluate a to the m over n. And a to the negative m over n is 1 over a to the m over n. Okay, so our last three little examples here. 81 to the 3 fourths power, that would be like 81 to the 1 fourth power. Actually, I'll just do this. It should be the fourth root of 81, and we'll cube that. Fourth root of 81 is 3. 3 cubed is 27. Now, if you're doing these in the calculator, make sure you put the power in parentheses. Otherwise, it'll raise it to the first power, and then divide the whole answer by the second number. Now, these I'll make these into the rational exponents. This is going to be a to the 9 sevenths times no, n to the 9 sevenths times n to the 5 sevenths. That's n to the 14 sevenths, which is n squared. 
Now the last one I think is really cool. We have the fifth, the, the square root of five times the fourth root of five. This is five to the one half times five to the one fourth. That's five to the two fourths times five to the one fourth. That's five to the three fourths. So this is like saying the fourth root of five cubed, which is the fourth root of 125. And that's it. So that'll do it for this section. And the way this class works is that we will meet once a week to answer questions. And if you can't be there, you can email me the questions and I'll go over the questions in our time together. So do the homework. Let me know if you have any questions and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks.